all of us pay taxes there are different types of taxes like the income tax goods and services tax and also the water tax but have you heard of a strange type of tax called the breast tax yes you heard it right as per the various references cited by the economic times and certain books there was once a tax called the mulakar or the breast tax that was imposed in kerala if the women wanted to cover their breasts in public the breast tax was a tax imposed on the lower caste that is the shudra and the untouchable dalit hindu women by the kingdom of travancore until 1924 the breast tax was supposedly forced by the land owning king on the lower caste hindu women which was to be paid if they wanted to cover their breasts and was further assessed in proportion to the size of their breasts it also cites the legend of nangeli who revolted against these high class tax collectors who objectified women the village legend nangeli is about a woman who lived in the early 19th century at cherthala in the erstwhile princely state of travancore in india the village officer of travancore came to her home to survey her breasts and collect the breast tax nangeli revolted against the harassment cutting off her breasts and presenting them to him in a plantain leaf she died soon from the loss of blood according to local villagers nangeli's husband chiru kandan seeing her mutilated body was overcome by grief and jumped into her funeral pyre and committed suicide of the many instances of atrocities in history this may well be one of the most violent and graphic shaming of lower castes and what's more the outrage of women's modesty as a tool of oppression is surely the worst kind of exploitation one can imagine even as we read the story the picture floats easily into our minds view where richly attired noblemen and ladies seated smugly on their ornate cushions giving an outrageous decree this makes us hate our unjust cultural traditions the most isn't it par ye sirf aadha sach hai in the highly connected world today fiction can be presented as a fact by the simple process of endless repetition embellishments and sharing over the social media people do not seem to be too concerned about checking authenticity or sources of the story to verify this story by a historical record we can check the report of the travancore mission for that period and surprisingly nowhere in it is there even a mention of a breast there is no mention of this in the extensive official colonial history and the taxation records of the travancore era so where does the story come from? Let's begin with a primer on the attire of women in 19th century Kerala. Owing to the humid heat all through the year, a piece of cotton cloth draped around the middle with another hung over the shoulder as an afterthought has largely been the traditional attire of the people of Kerala regardless of gender or caste. A 17th century Dutch visitor, William van Nieuwhoff, writes about the attire of Ashwati Tirunal Umayamma Rani the queen of travancore in the following manner in which he explicitly states that the upper part of her body appeared naked he sketched the queen and her attendants in his work the voyages and travels to the east indies 1653 to 1670 where it is quite clear that the queen and her attendants wore little to no cloth to cover their bosoms the story of the breast tax implies that nakedness was a humiliation imposed by the upper caste on the lower caste women to deprive them of the modesty of wearing a second piece of cloth this accusation hardly holds water when you realize that women of nambutri families and affluent nair families themselves saw no need for a breast covering garment either as a sign of luxury or even modesty in ancient india breasts were considered a fetish and the society was psychologically evolved enough to differentiate between the aspects of male and female this is also the reason why the temple carvings in the ancient india feature women with uncovered breasts and are still not considered to be stigma while the images are photographs of upper caste women from the era the ones that follow are paintings of women by royalty by the celebrated painter raja ravi varma the upper caste women covered their breasts 
not as a symbol of caste hierarchy but it was simply analog to today's fashion of wearing various types of clothes in the 20th century however with the advent of western fashion through colonial intervention sensibilities of fashion and propriety people of all backgrounds started to wear a stitched upper garment or tuck in an unstitched cloth around the chest to form a full body attire now coming to the actual question of breast tax no it was not a tax to cover one's breasts and no it was not calculated by the size of your breasts the travancore rulers had got the help of the british to ward off their threats and in the disguise of protection the british was successful in gaining the trust of the rulers they influenced the higher echelons of madambis or local chieftains and they began exerting their power on the kingdom by appointing their own regent colonel munro the kingdom had to pay a protectorate fee towards the british for their services for this the kingdom implemented both mulakaram and the thalakaram basically women tax and the man tax the landlords were supposed to pay these taxes according to the number of laborers they had in their service if there were 10 women laborers they paid 10 mulakaram and for 10 men they paid 10 thalakaram problems arose when the british regent exempted the converted christians from these taxes there was an uprising in the channar community against the exemptions given for converted christians in both upper clot and tax this revolt became the channar revolt or the marumarakkal samaram as told in malayalam or the thol silai kalaham as told in tamil after this revolt the taxes were almost stopped altogether and there ends the story of the breast tax so where does all this story come from A careful look at the references and sources of the Wikipedia article on Nangeli reveals that all of them are from the last decade and mostly from the last couple of years. None of them cites any historical records on Nangeli. There is a legend of Kanagi, goddess of chastity, and the events related to Kanagi have a high influence on the traditions and culture of Kerala. Where she is viewed as a brave woman who demanded justice directly from the king. who when he realized his unjust action died on the spot it stands to reason that this family fiction of nangeli is derived from kanagi's great sacrifice and is now serving a purely mischievous political purpose a fair unbiased study of the history points to us to the efforts of sethu lakshmi bai queen of travancore who spent nearly fifth or third revenue on education contributing Kerala's march towards the high literacy rate which we see today no less the contribution of chitra tirunal the last maharaja of travancore who ended discrimination and permitted entry of people of all castes into upper caste owned temples so it appears that certain sections of the media will resort to any sensationalized vulgar hype to elicit strong reactions from the audience and impose a skewed world view that gives strength to one faction of the political propaganda machine the world as much as we want does not want itself to render to the black and white picture history and truth are all shades of hues stay tuned stay educated and last but not the least know your culture by the self investigation of the truth shubhaste panthana santu jai hind jai bharat